Organizing your notes isn't just about putting them in folders and putting tags on them. If it was, no one would be looking for videos as to how to organize your notes. This video continues my series about note taking, this time focusing on overarching categorization, finding and resurfacing information, and storage and backup of those notes. We all have notes in our tool of choice, sometimes that collection being small, other times quite large. Making all of those notes useful, however, means doing something with them. I have my capture notes and my process notes that I went over in videos earlier in the series, but how do I actually make them useful? I could put them in folders, and I do, but folders and tags are a type of overarching categorization. They group things together that are vaguely or implicitly linked. Metadata like date, subject, source, author, book, attendance, event, project, topic, tag, department, folder, page number, and physical location of attendees can all be used alongside loads of other examples color coding, highlighting, and using various methods of identifying highlightable points can also be used as part of categorizing a note. But when those notes build up over time, I found it really hard to find exactly what I was looking for, and it just took too long for me. The tree structure in my folders just became a lot of clicking, even with the Johnny Decimal method, the alphabet method, and using loads of other number systems, it was just too much. And tags were pretty much the same, there was no explicit associations between the notes or the points. So for high level organization, it's great and they work, but when I'm working in the notes and I'm looking for a specific point, a specific link, or a specific reference of a point that I have found, it just became a friction point. When I'm working, I want to look at a small note that gives me all the references and points that I've collected all in one place, and it saves me going all over the place trying to find the points that I can think of. So I decided to look at using explicit associations with the notes I had and the notes that I was taking. Does it take a little bit more work? Yes, but it's work I'm doing at the front end, so when I'm creating something, I don't have to do as much work on the back end. And it also means I'm actually looking at the note. Why did I take the note? What am I going to do with the note? How am I going to use the note? Where is this note linked with anything else that I currently have in my note collection? This is where my working notes come into play, and they are the notes I am funnily using when I'm working. So when I'm writing a script for a video, or writing a blog, writing an article, writing an essay, or just looking at all of the thoughts and ideas I have around an idea when I'm currently looking at something to research. I will be going over exactly how I use my working notes in the next video, but they need to be atomic, meaning there can't be too many words in them, partly because it makes it easier to read and actually get to the point you want, but also, the more words you have in that note, the more likely there are going to be different ideas or thoughts that you can expand on and create other associations with notes that you may be missing if there are loads of words in there. I personally try to keep it to three small sections of maybe a couple of sentences, the first section being explanation of what the working note is, the second being a bit of expansion of what is actually going on, and the third just to link different ideas together with the note and how they actually link. With this atomic structure, it makes keeping my notes constant concept orientated quite easy because I don't have loads of words to expand on this thought because they are different working notes. What this means is when I'm working with the notes, I can have a look at a topic and go and expand in different ways, different ideas, different thoughts, different perspectives and different routes. Now I may come to the exact same end point. I may get to the same end note just through different ways of thinking and it gives me different perspectives on that concept with whatever it is I'm working on at that time. And making the notes densely linked not only makes it easy for me to bounce between different thoughts and ideas when I am going through one of those moments, but it also means that when I'm working on the note, when I'm processing the note to make it a working note, I'm actually thinking to myself, how does this note link with all the other stuff I currently know, making me critique what it is that I'm thinking? As each note starts to build out, lots of ideas start getting linked in the actual text, which means the title of the notes need to be understandable when I'm writing in that note. So my titles need to be clear, using either sentences, instructions, or commands with a specific direction as to what the note is actually saying, and this means I can reuse them and recontextualize them all over the place. Now, when I'm working on a note, I need the note to be independent. It needs to explain exactly what the thought is there and then, so I can just use it in whatever it is I am working on. But it doesn't mean that I can't just have a quick look at a link just to clarify what those highlighted ideas are. When I'm looking for a note in specific, it's often that I'm looking for a point in the note, not the in entire note in itself. So overarching categorization can be great for this, just looking for that specific point. Or I could look for a specific idea or topic that point is going to be in. 
Both options obviously work in this example, just looking for that highlightable point to get a reference. Maybe I thought, oh, that's a good idea. What video, what article or podcast was that? I could use any of those different ways to find the information. But when I'm working with a note and I'm looking for a point, ideally, I want to see other points that either support or critique the idea that I'm thinking about, and also to show me some related thoughts or ideas that could be included in whatever it is that I'm working on. And that is where tags and folders start to become a bit of an issue. If I found a point using a folder or tag-like structure, I would then need to go through all of the notes that are in that folder or tag, which if there aren't that many, you're okay, but when you start building out and tag lots of things and put things in folders, it's not fun looking through all that, especially when you have notes that are week, months, years old, and the tag, maybe you've tagged it for lots of different things, and you need to find that specific point that you're actually looking for in that note. If that note is long, trust me, you're not going to want to do it. <laughs> so for example, if I listen to a podcast in the past, and it's got loads of points in there, some learning, some coaching, some business, some work, some being about being a creator, I can't put that, that capture note in a folder because it would be in multiple folders, but you can't do that. So you'd need really, really specific folders, which means there's gonna be loads of clicking and loads of scrolling. I don't wanna deal with that. Or I could tag it with all of those things. But again, when I'm looking for that point in two months time, I might forget what point was specific being a creator and I have to then go through that note again. I don't wanna do that. I just want that point where I need it with references and links on them, which is what the working note is for. So I don't use tags because they serve the same purpose as folders. Yes, I could use tags for tagging projects or tagging the stage of a note or the stage of a project, but my action management system is in Todoist and Google Calendar, so there is no need for the tags in there. And I actually use my note status with my folders, so I don't need tags for that. I will say I do have one tag in my system, a lovely orange, and that is on every single daily journal. And that is because I blog every day, so it's a nice count of how many days I've been blogging consistently. So my folder structure actually becomes very simple. I have a journal folder, which is split up into years and months, just in case I want to go in there and have a look at past dates. I do use a plugin in the app I use, which is Obsidian, but in a year's time, I can imagine clicking that back button to go back 12 months is not going to be easy so folders are prepping for that. In my notes folder I have my blog because I write it in Obsidian and then I copy and paste it to my website. Now I could write it in WordPress but I link all of my blogs with my process and working notes to link ideas. Then I have my capture folder which is split up into medium of capture types. Then I have my people folder, a processing notes folder and a working notes folder. I then have a templates folder for you guessed it templates. Now I very 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 rarely actually open any of these folders. I will open the journal one to move the daily note into the appropriate month and then every once in a while move the month into the year, but that's about it. I will be going over my full workflow in a future video in my particular app of choice, but storage, backup, what do I do about it? Knowing the notes journey really helps here because if you have a capture note that is full of actionable points, you want your capture notes stored in a place that can be easy to move into your action management system, or maybe it's even taken in the app that you're using for action management. When it comes to backing up a capture note, it's very dependent on what sort of note it is. For me, I actually back up my capture notes in all of my other notes because it's in the same app, but you don't need a backup of all of your capture notes just the ones that you're actually going to use for references. A process note needs to be stored in a safe place, again, ideally in multiple places, just in case, but when it comes to storing them, I personally would store them in an app that allows for linking, either internal linking using backlinks or external linking using hyperlinks, because that allows you to link your process notes with your working notes, so when you are going backwards and forwards and working with them to create something, you can actually easily jump backwards and forwards. Working notes are the same as process notes, having those links, I would probably store working notes in multiple places as well, local storage and cloud storage, but if you are sharing your working notes publicly, that may need to be shared or duplicated elsewhere. For me, all of my notes are stored locally because that is how the app I use works. And I also use a sync feature in the app, which essentially does a copy paste of my notes database, my whole notes collection, to any device I use. So I have a backup in all the devices that I use Obsidian on. I do also have a cloud storage backup in Google Drive that I update every once in a while, just in case 
all of my devices decide to break at the same time. Now to address all of the different organization storage backup systems out there with Para, PPV, INF, iCore, Gianni Decimal, Dewey Decimal, and loads of other things out there, I take what I want from each framework and build my own. That's basically what I have done, and that's what I suggest everyone does really. And if you want to know exactly how I use these notes, look out for the next video in the series, but until then, get off YouTube and do something productive with your time instead.